Hostilities will end officially at one minute after midnight tonight. But in the interest of saving lives, the ceasefire began yesterday to be sounded all along the front, and uh, our dear Channel Islands are also to be freed today. Hello and welcome to this special programme celebrating the 75th anniversary of Jersey's Liberation Day. Today is the 9th of May and we are celebrating this anniversary under very unusual circumstances. The coronavirus has of course meant we must stay at home and adopt social distancing measures. So this year the Bailiff of Jersey and Lieutenant Governor as well as the Dean of Jersey will address Islanders in this unique broadcast arranged by the Bailiff's Chambers. As many of us will know, the Bailiff would normally address the crowd of Jersey here in Liberation Square during the formal part of the celebrations. We start today, however, in Royal Square to hear from our Bailiff, Mr Timothy Lecoq, who will be speaking from a very different but historically significant location. Your Excellency, Chief Minister, ladies and gentlemen, I am deeply privileged to welcome you to this 75th anniversary of the liberation of Jersey from occupying forces. Most of you will be watching this today from your own home, safe, I hope, either over the internet or on television. That alone illustrates just how unusual a liberation day this is. None of us could have imagined a few short weeks ago that we would have been marking the 75th anniversary of the end of the occupation in this way. We were looking forward to gathering together in Liberation Square in the greatest numbers ever, perhaps in sunshine and bright colours, to celebrate our liberation uh, by the forces of His Majesty the King on the 9th of May 1945. We anticipated a royal visit, festivities in St Helier, gatherings in our parishes, and the other things that have come to mark a traditional Liberation Day in Jersey, and the special plans for the 75th anniversary. None of that was to be. Today, instead, I am speaking to you from one of the balconies of the Royal Court building in the Royal Square. This balcony is only a few meters, a social distance, if you will, from the place where my greatly respected predecessor, Bailiff Alexander Coutanche, spoke to a packed square below following the announcement that Jersey was to be freed after five hard years of enemy occupation. I can barely imagine how he must have felt on what was for so many an unequivocally joyful occasion. I, like many of you, grew up on stories of the occupation, from my father who served overseas and came back with Force 135, my mother who was a child evacuee, and my grandparents and uncle who remained here throughout. Most of us have similar stories, and I hope that some of them at least are being remembered and retold by you on this day. It's our job to remember and to tell, to remember and to explain for the younger generation what happened here, what people endured and experienced, their hunger, fear, and then the relief and happiness at the restoration of freedom that this anniversary represents. It is tempting, perhaps, to suggest that we are experiencing in our current situation of lockdown what those here during the occupation experienced. It's not, of course, the same. During the occupation, our people experienced five years of enemy subjugation, examples of cruelty, real hunger, the fear of deportation, extreme deprivation, 
There was no sense of when or in, even if it was all going to end. It's not the same. But there are parallels. During those years, the people of Jersey faced an enormous challenge. Almost in an instant, their lives were drastically changed. They were no longer free. They were cut off from the outside world, from loved ones. Our world too has changed. And we too are cut off from loved ones and the easy social connection that we have taken for granted. For many, this is indeed a difficult time. During the occupation, there was endurance and community spirit. Some took risks and paid the price to protect and shelter others. We have all heard the stories that can make us proud of what was done by many during those years. These spontaneous acts of kindness, of bravery, of resistance. Our people showed themselves to be tough and resilient. These things are part of the Jersey spirit. And we are showing those qualities and spirit today in the dedication and selflessness of our healthcare workers, in those who work in our care homes, in our emergency services. It is found in those who work to maintain the infrastructure and essential supplies on which the rest of us depend. We see it in those who have responded to the current challenges by volunteering. It has shown itself in the ceaseless efforts of those in government and the civil service who are working long hours to grapple with the challenges we face. It has shown in the work and dedication of our state's members in responding to this crisis. But it also shows in the rest of us who have followed the guidance and directions of our experts and government. Those steps that we have taken and are taking and the restrictions we accept, which I recognize have had a significant impact on everyday working lives, are keeping us all safe by protecting the community as a whole. We are entitled to be proud of what we have all achieved. This is what Jersey is about, the Jersey spirit, and it shows a resilience that those here in the occupation would have recognized. Jersey people, wherever we are from, or whatever our mother tongue may be, are strong and community-minded, and I am proud to be bailiff. I know, though, that the burden of these current restrictions has fallen heavily on our senior citizens. Many are deprived of valued connections to family and friends. Some are of the generation here during the occupation. We owe them a debt for all they have done over the years to make Jersey what it is, and we recognize them at this time. Liberation Day calls on us to remember not only the joyful freedom in May 75 years ago, but also those who suffered most during the preceding five years. The evacuees who left their homes for an uncertain future, never knowing when or if they would see their families again. The deportees sent away to imprisonment and in some cases death. Those who suffered and died here in slavery and forced labor. Those shot for acts of resistance. We remember them all even if we cannot do so in our usual way. But Liberation Day, especially the 75th anniversary, must be a time of looking forward as well as looking back. We can take this anniversary as an opportunity to ask ourselves searching questions. What is truly important to us? What do we value? What do we really need? What can we do without? What gives meaning to our lives? What do we want for our community? If we reflect upon them and reach answers that come from the best in us, then we will be making the most of our current situation, the freedoms that we all enjoy, and the choices we can make given to us by liberation. Our lives and understanding have been changed over the past months, and this is hard. But the marvelous qualities of the Jersey community and its people are clear. We can be confident in the capabilities and capacity of this generation and can draw from this deeper knowledge in the years to come. Please celebrate this, our National Day, safely, in the best way that you can. Even if we are not physically together, we are together in spirit. Thank you. That was the bailiff giving the usual address on Liberation Day from an unusual location. Important thoughts and words to reflect on at this historic time.
Now, the island's Lieutenant Governor, His Excellency Air Chief Marshal Sir Stephen Dalton, will read a message from Her Majesty the Queen. Her Majesty the Queen and many members of the royal family have had the opportunity to visit Jersey before and after the occupation. All will have left these shores conscious of the warmth and obvious generosity of spirit of Jersey people. Indeed, we recently had the honour to welcome Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal, to Jersey. And Her Royal Highness, the Countess of Wessex, and the Royal Highnesses, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, would have visited had it not been for the limitations imposed as a result of the COVID-19 virus. 2020 has already presented the whole world with an unparalleled challenge. And for some in Jersey, it must have brought back memories of the very significant restrictions on life imposed by the occupation in the 1940s. The direct result of the fortitude and sacrifice that saw Islanders through the impositions of the occupation is that today you can celebrate not just a significant anniversary of your freedom, but also the building of a stronger, closer community which supports one another in a time of specific threat and in everyday island life. Indeed, we are in this current anti-COVID-19 campaign together, and together we will come through this contemporary threat. On this historic day, we may not be able to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the island's liberation in quite the way that you would have liked to do so. But Her Majesty the Queen has asked me to convey her greetings to you in this personal message on this special day for Jersey. To my loyal members of the States and people of Jersey, I send my warmest greetings on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of your liberation from enemy occupation. On this significant anniversary, I'm reminded of the pleasure that my parents took in being able to visit shortly after your liberation in 1945, together with my own fond memories of visiting the island. As you remember the bravery and sacrifice of the Jersey men and women who lived through occupation, deportation and evacuation, I know that you will join together again as a community to overcome the challenges that you are facing. I send my thoughts and prayers to all the people of Jersey as you mark this notable anniversary in the island's history. Signed, Elizabeth R. Words of warmth and reassurance from Her Majesty the Queen, read by His Excellency, marking our special 75th anniversary. And now to the Dean of Jersey. The Dean would normally lead a service in Liberation Square, which cannot happen this year. With the island's churches closed under the current lockdown conditions, we will cross now to the grounds of the town church, where the very Reverend Michael Curl has this homily for us. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Helier Parish Church. On this 75th anniversary of the liberation of our island community, we come together, even though we are physically apart, to remember and to thank God for our deliverance from occupation and oppression, and to pray that we might use our hard-won freedom in the cause of justice, peace and reconciliation always remembering the courage of those who lived through the dark days of occupation and the sacrifice of those who gave their lives to bring liberty to future generations. The church today features as a backdrop to this part of our liberation celebrations and it serves as a poignant reminder that on this anniversary our own freedom is restricted as churches and other public buildings remain closed for our own safety during this pandemic. Nevertheless, in expectation that we ourselves will be liberated in due course, we recall that glorious day 75 years ago when troops landed not far from where I'm standing to bring hope to a generation of people who had experienced hardship, suffering and loss. Today, therefore, is a day of thanksgiving as we look back, but we also include our debt of thanks to those who are sustaining and supporting the island today during the crisis that we, like many around the globe, are facing. So, on this day of mixed emotions, let us pray. 
Almighty God, we give you thanks for the liberation of this island from enemy occupation 75 years ago, for the determination and resilience of those who remained here throughout the occupation, for those who were evacuated or deported and returned safely to their homes and families, and for those who did not, for those who fought long and hard and who worked to bring about the liberation which we celebrate today, for the bonds of friendship which have forged over the years, overcoming old hostilities, for the freedom we enjoy to order our affairs and to live in liberty and peace, for our island community, that it may be a place of trust and friendship where all are valued and cared for, for those who are working in this current pandemic to ensure the safety and prosperity of this island, for those who are working in our health and care services in our response to COVID-19 and to ensure the physical and mental health of our people. For those who are guiding our bailiwick at this time and shaping the policies that protect and guide our common life. For our most gracious Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, for the Lieutenant Governor, the Bailiff, the Royal Court, the Chief Minister and the States of Jersey, and all those in authority, that they may make wise decisions. Eternal God, the refuge and help of all your people, we give you thanks for all that you have given us, for all that you have done for us, for all that you are to us. In our weakness, you are our strength. In our sorrow, you are our comfort and peace. And in our darkness, you are our light. We make these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A final blessing on this Liberation Day. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you, now and always. Amen. Poignant words indeed, and I'm sure the message of community and strength will mean more to us now than at any other time. Now, before we bring the programme to a close, we're going to head over to the Freedom Tree and listen to the Connetab, Sadie Lesueur, Renard and Miss Olivia Jones sing Beautiful Jersey. And if you happen to have a flag to wave, now's the time. Young quater que j'aime, que je n'oublie, ve jamais, dans mes pensées, très jour premier. Cajun ve ran a compade a se beauté, don't to me voyage l'étranger. J'ai mon paradis, peu belle tox soit soleil, que j'aime la paix des jugeries, la mouth la vérité, aussi des morales, que j'aime la paix des jugeries. Mon bien petit jerry, la reine des îles, les deux manaisons, tu me penses pas près du Dieu. Oh, tu du souvenir du bien temps que j'ai eu. Quand je pense à jerry, la reine des îles. There's a spot that I love, that I ne'er can forget. Though far I may roam, t'will be dear. For its beauty will linger in memory yet. 
Where'er the world I may stay, Dejersey, fair isle of the ocean, the queen, Thy charms are so many and rare, For love finds a home mid each beauteous scene, my heart ever longs to be there. Beautiful Jersey, gem of the sea, ever my heart turns in longing to thee. Bright are the memories you waken for me, Beautiful Jersey, gem of the sea. On thy shores I have wandered in glad days of yore with one who is dear to my heart. For the love links will bind us as one evermore. Although for a while we must part And oft in my dreams do I see the dear place The dear little isle of the seas And in fancy I gaze on a sweet loving face, a face that is dearest to me. Beautiful Jersey, gem of the sea, ever my heart turns in longing to thee. Bright are the memories you waken for me. Beautiful Jersey, gem of the sea. Amazing scenes and an emotional performance that reminds us that liberation crosses all generations of islanders. Annually, we enjoy the reenactment of the liberation of the island, specifically the sequence of events leading to the island recognising its freedom. Starting with the moment that Surgeon Lieutenant Ronald MacDonald and Sub Lieutenant David Milne, with the Jersey Harbour Master, flew the Union flag and Jersey flag from the Harbour Master's office. Following the flags being raised on the Harbour Master's office, the Harbour Master Captain Richmond guided Colonel Robinson of Force 135 through the front entrance of the Pom d'Or Hotel and upstairs to the balcony where they raised the Union flag together with a Jersey police officer. It was the first time that the Union Jack had been hoisted officially since the occupation began nearly five years earlier. Today, this act is being carried out alone by Captain Brian Nibbs, a former harbour master. On that day, 75 years ago, the front of the hotel was awash with islanders, celebrating the freedom of the island in that joyful moment. Finally, Captain Le Brock of Force 135, who had made his way up to Fort Regent, raised a flag on the fort, signalling to St Helier and to the island that Jersey was free again. Thank you for watching and enjoy your Liberation 75 celebrations.